Joining us now, a guy who was the general manager of the Atlanta Falcons for 13 seasons. Right. Thomas Dimitrov. Did it did it feel like 13 years while you were there? <laughs> Sometimes it felt like many, many more, as you right. can imagine. You're on the hot seat every year there for some reason. I don't know why, but, it, you know, look, it's gone by. I miss it. I miss the euphoria of winning, not the losing. But as I said before, the, the losing became more difficult as you went on in those 13 years, and the winning was less uh, enjoyable. Yeah. That's what happened to Parcells. He got to the point where the despair of losing outweighed dramatically right. the thrill of victory, and that's when he decided he had enough. It's a great point. Yeah, what it was so, you know, like, I miss playing, right? I miss the camaraderie, the adrenaline of running on the field, right? And just nothing can, like, do, you know, replicate that. Sure. As a GM, like, what is it that you miss, right? Like, what is it, the aspect, of, you know, that I kind of portrayed as a player that goes into a GM? Yeah, look, I, I think, honestly, I think it's the off season when you truly are building, right? right. You're, you're putting it all together, and you're, you're actually being able to spend that much more time with your head coach. Of course, you love the games, but there's nothing like that time. That's the stretch. project of building the together. The project of building, right. yeah. And, and I, I do, I mean, the, you know, I think it was Ernie Acorsi who said he used to stand in the, in the back, you know, back ways of the, of the games. The games were tough. As it went on longer and longer, you, you know, I kind of, I wish that it was sort of like basketball. My good friend, R.C. Buford, he doesn't travel to all the games, right? They don't have that many games, in, or they have that many more games in the NBA. Yeah. You could never do that in the NFL. But I, I didn't miss that right. later on. You get people throwing literal or figure, figurative darts, and it, it just got a little bit old that way. Right. I think there's really good people in this league and really smart and good and talented GMs. Um, and and it, it'll be interesting to watch how quickly they turn over in the years to come. Now that you've been out of it for a couple of years, and this is a conversation we've had in the past, and it really is odd to me how it's developed to the point in the NFL where as a GM, you get one shot, and then it's like you were never even there. Like, your, your name never even comes up. And these guys, and I feel bad when the text messages are exchanged among my writers as to so-and-so is interviewing for this GM job, and I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right? right? So why is it that the NFL has evolved to a point where, with very, very limited exceptions, it's just one opportunity for a general manager, no matter what you do, it's one opportunity? I, I, I was talking to someone about this the other day. Head, owners look at head coaches around the league, and they know their head coach's style. They fire that head coach, and they know they have a really strong understanding and idea about who the next type of coach is. Is it diametrically opposed? You get a player coach, and then you get a hard, hard-ass hard coach on the, on the next go-around. I don't think with GMs they have that same view. They're like, all right, they're not, they don't know about the other GMs around the league. They don't know their styles. So someone could interview you, but they don't have the same grasp like they would re or hiring another head coach that was at another team. And in the end, it's unfortunate because I, I would say this about all of our friends, Scott Pioli and Jerry Reed. There are a yeah, lot of GMs out right. there that are really talented, and they've learned, they're that much better after their experiences, course, right? To think right. that they're not. Is is to me? It's I think it's I don't I just think it's wrong. It's, yeah. It's so you're, you're you're so you're saying there's just it is wrong. There's no doubt yeah. about it. You're I, I kind of like what you're saying there. You're kind of saying that you don't think the owners kind of know the nuance of what a GM's doing and kind of I know you're not trying to be disrespectful, yeah. but no. don't quite get you know the difference of one guy and how he builds a team and comparable to another guy who hasn't been successful. They're kind of just looking at oh you're just picking players well, and that's it. That's right. And yeah. I think that when you look at the, the coaches, you kind of you know their personalities, you know how they're going to approach right. it. And the GM, if if you have a track record and, and every GM does of yeah. missing on picks or whatever, you have to sell that GM to your media and it's not as easy to sell the GM to the media the second time around. I, that's another interesting I, I I just find that, like, mind-blowing because I'm just like, how could they not sell How could they not sell you and all the damn good players they have with the Fal – you guys had it with the Falcons, how relevant you were, the NFC Championship appearances, up 28 to 3. Sorry to bring up the bad <laughs> memory, right? right all man. of those things, and I just – I just – I don't get it. It's, it's something we talk about, you know, quite often, and uh, coaches get a second chance – and it's harsh for them. I'm not trying to certainly, I know it's not easy, but it just seems like it's much more harsh for the GM. What do you have going on now? So working right now as the CEO of a startup analytics, a football analytics company, I'm excited about it. I know sometimes you guys are anti-analytics, and I really, this is a perfect segue. I want you to know at the core, I am old school football, 
and joining this group, I believe, I truly do believe this, if you augment these really good football people, because most GMs think they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone with their ability to evaluate. There's so much underutilized data out there that if you're smart as team builders and you have a smart owner and you are able to utilize that data and put it in the right place, I think you can take a good GM to be very good and a very good one to be a Hall of Famer. There's too much information out there to not be utilized, and that's why I'm excited. It's a roster optimization company where ultimately our, our customers are the NFL right now. In time, it could be NCAA, it could be you know European League, you never know. Data out there, roster optimization. Think about this, one last, one, one last point. When I used to go to Arthur Blank and tell him I had 12 scenarios, here you go, Arthur, right. and I was proud as a peacock, I'm talking off-season scenarios. This, this tool, this, this algorithm, can churn out millions of scenarios, and it will give you, if you want to call it three or four, you look at them, you take your, your team, the Atlanta Falcons, and you compare it to Sumer Sports algorithm, um, a, a derived approach and the best roster that we would present, and to me, it's all about juxtaposition, and that's what our league is about. The more information you can use and make your, your decisions more sound, we think, it, we think it can be really special. And we're not anti-analytics, we just understand there's a water's edge with certain things. Yeah, the humanity right. that takes over. The fact that you get into a locker room, you get into a huddle, you have a dynamic presence who elevates guys yeah. to perform above what they were going to be. That's where analytics can't really find a home. Well, that's a great point, and I, and I would say, given my background, that's why I feel so comfortable going into these GMs and pitching this, because I do at the core at the core know that it's about it is about character when i asked 32 of the gms that i traveled around and talked to 32 of them basically said thomas it's not about the player it's about the person that we missed on yeah and 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 i know that sounds so what i'm saying is you take the data and you 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 put that data in the right spot to take care of the objective sides that need to be solidified and then you continue to do the work on the character side whether that is the right um, psychometrics, and there are elements out there that, that have new elements of data out there that we could tap into. Not all, because you can't say, you can't say this guy's disciplined, this right, guy's a good guy, right. bad guy, that's tough. Here's what's great. You use the word psychometrics, and I know that when Thomas Dimitrov says it, it's absolutely positively 100% a word. If that's something Chris had said, I'd have to look it up <laughs> to make sure that it's actually a word in the English language. All right, Sumer Sports CEO Thomas Dimitrov, we appreciate some of your time, and we look forward to yes. talking to you again down the road. Thank you, gentlemen. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.